Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install Peppermint OS. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and we'll finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. What I have in front of me here is the, is the Peppermint OS website. I'll make sure to go ahead and put a link in the description below. We've just received another update to the Peppermint 10 release, and we can see that by going down here and seeing an announcement that says, Introducing Peppermint 10 Respin. If you'd like to read more about it, you can go to the news section of peppermintnos.com and hit the continued version of their blog post here. And you can see all the different changes that they've made with this new Respin release. Mainly some bug fixes. As it says here, they added a cursor resizer, a web browser manager to aid in the help of installing or removing web browsers, and a few other things that you can read on about. So we'll go back to the main website here and they make it really easy for you to download. You can either select the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version of Peppermint OS 10. Most computers nowadays have the 64-bit architecture in their processors and that's the one that I need. But if you do have older hardware and you have a 32-bit processor, they still support Peppermint OS on those processors as well. So let's go ahead, select download, and then we can go ahead and do a direct download. Make sure you hit allow, and then your download has started at this point. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to go ahead and launch the Belen Adger app in order to flash the image onto a USB, CD, or DVD of my choice. Belen Adger is an easy to use application and is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. And you can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNEP Bootin or Rufus. Let's go ahead and select the image that we just got done downloading. So we hit select image. And as you can see here in my downloads, I have Peppermint 10, the 12.10.2019 release for the AMD 64 or 64-bit architecture. So I'll go ahead and open that up. Next, I'll go ahead and select a target, but I currently don't have anything in my computer, so let me go ahead and put a USB in. And once I have the USB inserted, it will pick up on it by itself. Although you can change what drive is selected if you have more than one USB in your computer, make sure to select the drive that has nothing in it because it, this program will erase all the contents in the current USB drive that is selected. So once you have your drive selected where you want to flash the image onto, go ahead and hit continue. And then finally, all you have to do is hit flash. This will take a few moments. And after you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Peppermint OS on and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys, such as F2 or F10. Then, finding a tab, usually called boot order, and exchanging the order so that the bootable disk is first to boot. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS, and you should get a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. And if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. So let's go ahead and first select the Install Peppermint OS option. You do have some other options here, such as trying out Peppermint OS as a live image, which will allow you to go ahead and try things out before you install them permanently. And a few other options down here just to check for some defects and test memory out. So let's go ahead and press Enter on the Install Peppermint OS option. Give it a moment here while Peppermint's starting up. And here we're welcomed by the installer. So let's go ahead and select what language we want to run through with the installer. English is fine for me. Go ahead and hit continue after that. Next we're asked to go ahead and select a keyboard layout. The English US keyboard layout is fine for me. So also you can test your keyboard down here. So if I typed in QWERTY right, I go ahead and get my keys out so everything looks fine for me. You can also detect a keyboard layout automatically if you want by running through a series of tests by selecting this option down here. Once you verify that your keyboard's working well, you can go ahead and hit the continue button. 
Next you have a few other options. You have the normal installation, which comes with the web browser, some extra utilities, office software, as well as multimedia players. The other option is the bare essentials, so just a web browser and some basic utilities as it says here. And that comes with the minimal installation. So if that's all you need, you can go ahead and use the minimal installation because it's less resource intensive. And then we have a few other options here. We can download updates while installing Peppermint, that way that they're ready to go after the install is finished. Also, if you have any hardware, such as a Wi-Fi adapter or graphics card that's not supported, you can go ahead and try out some of the proprietary drivers for them. And you can also have them installed right away by selecting this install third-party software option. I don't need them, so I will not select this option. And know that you can also install them later once you have Peppermint OS installed fully. So I'm going to go ahead and select the normal option and to download the updates while installing Peppermint. Then I'm going to hit continue. Next, you have to choose the installation type. I'll go ahead and select the erase disk and install Peppermint. This means that your current hard drive or SSD will get completely erased, meaning you should have a storage space where you do not mind deleting all of its contents and or a fresh brand new storage space. So as it says, warning, this will delete all your programs, documents, photos, music, and anything else that may exist on the storage device as of now. A few other options down here. You can choose to encrypt your new Peppermint installation. This will just set up a password that you have to enter in every time you log into the system besides your user password. So you'll actually have two passwords to put in, one for your system and then one for your user. If you want to go ahead and use LVM, which is the logical volume management, you can as well. This is a different partition type that allows you to go ahead and resize your storage device at a later point. It comes in handy if you have virtual machines where you want to designate a certain amount of space, storage space right now and then maybe in the future up that storage space. LVMs make it really easy to do so. Otherwise, you'll have to jump through some hoops with the standard partitioning scheme. I know exactly how much I want to devote to mine, so I'm not going to select this option. And then you have the something else option where you can go ahead and partition the storage space yourself for advanced users. I'm okay with erasing my disk and installing Peppermint because I have a fresh new disk available. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the install now button. And it says here that it's about to write those changes to the disks and just kind of an overview of what it's going to create as well as just making sure that you do want to go ahead and write those changes. I'm sure I want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And now I'm asked for what time zone I'm in. So today I'll be in Los Angeles. I'll go ahead and hit continue. Pick whatever time zone you are in. And then here we're going to go ahead and set up our first user for Peppermint OS. I'm going to create a user called Savvy Nick and my computer's name will be Savvy Nick as well. The username is Savvy Nick and then go ahead and put your password in and confirm it. You can also choose between these two options to log you in automatically or require a password when logging in. I like to log in automatically but be careful choosing this option because if anybody reboots your computer, they will not be asked for a password to log in and they will have your desktop available to them. In most cases, you probably want to require my password to log in. Go ahead and continue once you have your selected correctly. And then at this point, Peppermint OS will begin installing its base system. Peppermint OS is an L Ubuntu based Linux distribution and its main focus is to supply a very lightweight, fast and stable operating system for its users. Peppermint OS uses the long term support base so that you have a very stable operating system with support for the long term. It also offers the 32 bit version of itself for older hardware and works great with older hardware, making it a great choice if you need something that's still compatible but also minimal and won't use up a bunch of resources so that your old hardware can focus on the user and not on a tasking operating system. And once the base system is finished, installing, you'll be asked to go ahead and reboot your computer in order to use the newly installed operating system. And while rebooting, you'll want to make sure to go ahead and remove any installation media, 
such as the USB that you've put into your computer. So you don't have to boot back into the live image of the system or the installer. Otherwise, you'll just be forced to reboot your system once more. So go ahead and hit restart now when you're ready. And once everything's finished booting in and loading, you'll be welcomed by your new Peppermint OS desktop environment. Congratulations, at this point you've successfully installed Peppermint OS. Let's go ahead and just take a few moments just to kind of look around and see what there is on our desktop. And at the bottom we have the time as well as the current language selected, a volume so we can change the volume as well as mute it, the current amount of battery life that you have left if you have a laptop computer. This here is your network settings. I'm currently wired in. This will be a wireless icon if you're not wired in. And then notifications and updates that you're getting from the operating system will be under this badge here. Right here you can switch uh, to different workspaces. And on the left hand side you have your default web browser which is Mozilla Firefox. Access to your files and your file browser or manager. And then the terminal as well as a multimedia player. If you hit the menu button you'll get a pop-up with all of the subcategories and the respected programs in each subcategory. You can also move this around to kind of adjust for size if it's too small for you right off the bat. If you need to log out or anything like that you can shut down log out exit and suspend up here as well as reach some kind of settings option. The background is very uncluttered and I'm not even sure that you can add items to it but yes you can so you can go ahead and add items to your desktop background some Linux distributions don't allow this feature but I do enjoy the ones that do well that's pretty much it this wraps up the Peppermint OS install I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Peppermint OS and if you have any questions comments or suggestions please post them in the comments section below also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video thanks for watching